I think the first manager I remember as managers was Bill Reeves, Bill Whittaker, of course. And then I think when he retired, there's a the name of the man, Bert Johnson, took over. He's a, a man from Leicester, from the Midlands area, you know. He was there for a little while, then he left. And somebody in the name, I think it was, he's a gingerhead fella, Bill Craig. Um, he came, he, he was signed on for United <coughs> by the manager before him. With along with Phil Hayes. But Phil Hayes is another prolific goal scorer, well liked man in the team up there. Um, well, then eventually Bill Craig took over as manager from then onwards. Um, going, going back to Wilf Mannion, was he a level headed sort of chap? Yeah. Uh, with all the playing for England and what have yeah. you? Yeah, well, he never. Never used to let run to his head or anything. He'd just run out the, on the field, play like any other man sort of thing. He's a clean man, you know. He, he wouldn't sort of foul anybody intentionally or, or anything. If he if he did, he'd be up to him straight away, shake his hand, see if he, he was okay or whatever. Yeah, and, and uh, he never let it go to his head. Um, what he'd done off the field or not was another man, you know. You, now, an old friend of ours, Bob Bishop, talked about Wilf Mannion and he said he took the club to a different level. It's good what? He said he took the club to a higher level. To a higher level, level yes. Yeah. Um, but he did, because again, in them days, Bear Mind was only playing, Eastern County League was only playing, um, just not like nothing like today's uh, games are competitive or anything like that. And he certainly raised the profile for us, you know, and gave us a good uh, boost. We happened to get old, have this here, Sam McCrory, come down and play for us, um, ex Irish International. So, and I think probably they are the two most um, highly footballers that we've had, can you not have had to pay for them during the history. Sam McCrory, not so well known as Wilfie Manuel was, of course. But, I mean, even today you talk to a lot of the kids about Wilfie Mannion, don't you? You talk about or whatever. Um, can you tell us anything you can remember about Bob Bishop? Because we spoke to Bob quite recently. Well, I knew he was a very nice man to talk to, you know. Um, I had many, I had many a, a chat with you now with Bob after the match, and, well, not only after the match, but before, if I saw him sometimes in the street, you know, I'd see him come home sometimes on his bike, and I'd say, hello, Bob, hello, Bob, and I'd be up and pull on his bike, you know, and he'd stand for five, ten minutes, have a little, have a little natter, you know, and uh, I always said to people, oh, Bob's a nice old boy, you know, and he, he's always got time for it. He also had a brother, Jack, didn't he? Yes, he did. And I think he was a winger. Um, a left-sided winger, I believe. Yeah, but he didn't play for us so after the and not like Bob did type of thing. And I don't think it's too many people today that they, that remember Jake like they would Bob. You know. Let's talk about games. Let's talk about games that you can remember. Just, you know, what, what were the exciting games? Which games do you remember? Do you remember the Cambridge City games? They must have been big games. Mm -hmm. They were in that. They were in those days. We played Cambridge City. Same Cambridge City. Don't forget. We were early in amateur side, and we never played them for donkey's years. <coughs> we never played Cambridge City for donkey's, not on a regular basis, only if you used to meet them in the yearly Cambridge Invitation Cup, something like that. And uh, they were sort of known as an amateur side, this is where we were growing up a bit. And it got to about the, uh, they always had a good ground, Milton Road, the, the original ground. That's the one good thing they had hiding them. And what, what about the support? What about the crowds at these games? Well, the crowds at the Kansas yes. City games in those days could be eight, eight and a half, nine, ten thousand even, depending upon the importance of the competition. You know, if you was playing, it w wouldn't be a league match with us, so it would only be a lot, perhaps an FA Cup game, something like that. And. Uh, you get to work next morning, and it would just depend upon the result of which side won. You'd get the right gene up if you see that one, you know. But 
said this particularly here when we had this Johnny Hasbrand was the um, Hungarian, I don't think he was an Indian, so I think he was a Hungarian refugee or something like this. And uh, he scored three, uh, three scored out to this, he scored three goals in ten minutes against the city this particular night. Up at Milton Road as well, and we come away from Milton Road beating them five nil, and everybody just crowded on the Milton Road pitch to get hold of. We love Johnny, Johnny has us, right. we love Johnny, you know. And uh, then eventually, Cambridge, it was Cambridge City, I think, that finally forced the use to actually apply for suddenly um, election because they decided to apply for it as well. And because uh, Cambridge City applied, we had to keep with them. So we applied with them and went in. And then in those days, the Southern League probably had about three divisions, the Premier, the Southern League Division and the Northern Division. And um, we were both, obviously, we both started off in the Premier Division. But first of all, we got relegated. So we got down to the, the Southern Division. And because uh, we never played City for a year or so, well then, eventually time went on and we got again promoted back into the Premier League of the Southern League and it wasn't long after that, I'm talking about I think 68, when we signed on Bill Leavers, who in my mind today was still the best manager the club have ever had. He, he, was, uh, he took us on to um, Southern League Championship and the Southern League Cup one year, then the second year, uh, 1970, again, um, suddenly we retained the Southern League title and kept that Southern League title. And then with Bill, so we went on to become a football league club eventually by being voted in, not like today's games that happened to win a one match, mm. a playoff final. You had to get voted in against probably the four bottom clubs of what was in those days. And uh, there might have been 30 of you, um, individual non league clubs all applying. In total, you might have been um, applying, a, 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 a voting for 40 clubs mm. against you. And for the first few years, of course, we got, everybody got voted in, it was, it was closed shop. But um, then I think, so I think United over the years, they had such good times on the field and they also had a good um, follow-up process with all the clubs throughout the country. They sent them out like a CV, I suppose it would be, of what was going on at the club and the workings of it, you know. That when the um, meeting came this particular year, 1970, we uh, were able to take, um, we, 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 vote, we were voted and uh, we got voted in in favour of Bradford Park Avenue, okay. which was a coincidence when you think about it because going back to 1954, the first time we got to the FA Cup, first round proper, the two sides we met in this year FA Cup was Newport County in the first round, who we beat, and Bradford Park Avenue in the second round, who we lost in the last five minutes on a penalty T1. And, uh, in, in the same, in 1970, they were two of the sides in the bottom four that we was voting against to get into the league, and it was Bradford Park Avenue who we succeeded put them out. So, all those years later, we then just finally <laughs> returned. Can you remember how you heard that Cambridge United had been voted into the league? Can I remember? I was, just, I was at that time of day a barman in the supporters club. And of course everybody was flocking in the club that morning. News through yet, news through yet. All of a sudden the news came through. United elected into football league. Oh, the club nearly, you know, the, the, the club roof nearly fell in with the sound of everybody's cheers, eruption, you know, breaking out. And Watney's that day had got a new beer out on, uh, on um, 
do uh, for sale uh, what this Starlight Bitter. And they gave the club an 18 gallon barrel of this beer for the fans. That 18 gallon barrel went in 10 minutes. <laughs> I've never seen a barrel of beer go to bring it to anybody, you know. Was, fill it up again, Mount. Fill it up again, Mount, you know. To, so some got some and some other poor devils didn't get anything from the time they got there, all, all gone, you know. <laughs> And I was there right until three o'clock that afternoon when we closed the bar and a lot of the fans all went out on the back of a bus around the town with the banners in the air, you know, etc. going all around there. And I stayed behind there and uh, to, to clear up and wash what glasses up we could and whatever. And, and at that time there's a lady in there who was helping me to wash up and that lady eventually became my wife. Okay. Cool. Yeah. What a day. What a day. Yeah. But anyway, off went everybody down the town. Back they come again at, at uh, five o'clock, and at five o'clock, of course, the bar was open again, Paul, and from then onwards, right through to the one o'clock next morning, the, the bar we be selling right the way through, you know, the bar. Cool. I think I finally got home about three o'clock that <coughs> morning, from after we got everybody else and got the place cleared up and the floor all washed over and everything. So I think all by all, everybody had a good day up there in them days. And of course I'm talking about beer and might have only been about one or five in old money for a pint and uh, shoot them for a bottle of, uh, of ale, you know, uh, two bob for, for scotch or whatever. So everybody all had a good tuck in, you know. <laughs> You mentioned earlier about when we played uh, Bradford, Park Avenue and uh, Newport in the FA Cup. When, didn't we have to borrow shirts that day or something? We had to, well, we, the first game we played in Newport County was a two-all draw. And of course, Newport County played in the same colours as we did, black and amber. So it was a case, and of course, Newport played in the um, chain strip up the Market Road. Because when we went to Newport, we hadn't got a spare kit to take with us. Because the only kit we, we got was this here black and amber kit. So, again, what was done, we was arranged with the city police, because then days they had a team that was to play in the Thursday League on the common. And um, it was arranged with the police that we borrowed their kit to play in this in we, we play. So they off, we went to Newport that, uh, that Thursday afternoon and played in blue, in blue and cerise and blue square shirts, you know. Um, and uh, as, it, as it turned out, we, t we uh, finished up the game being victorious, but beating them 2 1, you know, to take us into the second round, which uh, was against Bradford Park Avenue who were a little bit of a better side than Newport County and they finally overcame us and beat us as a 2-1. Um, well then the next year we played Torpy United away in the first round proper. Of course they give us a right proper, uh, proper back bang and didn't they? 6-0 I think it was their beat us, you know. Um, poor old Teddy Bell got a serious ankle injury that day playing for us. And I don't think he ever played another game for Cairns United after that. I think he might have gone on and played one or two games for Eddie. Um, but I don't <coughs> think he ever played another game for us after that game. Yeah. Because um, he was so severe for him, you know. And uh, 